Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we will be looking at the topic of hikmah, wisdom. This topic unfortunately is grossly neglected in modern Islamic spiritual culture. There is an emphasis for worship or legal issues, the adherence to Islamic law, which is good. But we forget that the ultimate aim of the human being is to reach their humanity, and that is arrived at the intellect. And we know that hikmah is part of the Islamic spiritual tradition because Allah's, one of God's names is Al-Hakim, God is the wise. Hikmah has been emphasized greatly in the Hadith literature, in the long tradition of Islamic mysticism and spirituality, we find ample evidence that Hikmah is an end unto itself. In fact, it is considered to be the highest end. So let's go a little bit deeper now and let us define wisdom according to the different schools, the lexicographers, which were the people who wrote dictionaries, of Arabic language. We will look at some of the statements from the Quran. We will look at statements from the Sufi saints and also from Hadith and then a contemporary view of the topic of Hikmah. Now, in Arabic, wisdom comes from the root letters Ha, Kaf, and Mim. Hakam, which means to restrain, like a, to restrain a horse for unruliness so that it becomes submissive to the rider. And it also metaphorically means that hikmah or wisdom is that faculty of the human being which reigns the, in the intellect. It reigns in the powers of anger and desire and makes the human aspect or the, or the human intelligence reign supreme. Other meanings of hikmah include, in Arabic, means to master or to do something skillfully, such as ihkam. Or it is said that hikmah means, it refers to the knowledge of the true nature of things, an action according to what is supposed to be done. It's a very general definition. And philosophers divided wisdom into the theoretical and the practical. Raghib Isfahani, a famous scholar, of the 12th century writes that hikmah is the attainment of that which is true by knowledge and intellect. With respect to God, it is the knowledge of things and their origination in utmost perfection. And with respect to the human being, it means knowledge of creation and doing good deeds. Or another lexicographer, Giorgiani, he says that wisdom is the knowledge that inve investigates the realities of things as they truly are in existence, according to human capacity. It is a theoretical knowledge and not an instrument for another type of knowledge. So what he's saying there is that wisdom is a means unto itself. It's an end. It is to know things or the realities of things, which is one of the ultimate en ends for the human being. Hikmah, as it is mentioned in the Quran, Hikmah is mentioned 20 some times in the Quran. And it says, God refers, says, these are the verses of the wise book. So God is referring to the Quran as being wise. It contains wisdom. He says, he says, remember the favor of God upon you and what he has revealed to you of the book and wisdom by which he instructs you. So notice in the wording, well, this is a translation, but even in the original Arabic, where you find that, that the word, the book, and hikmah have been used in the same sentence but on different to, to, to denote two different things. So we say that there is the Quran is hikmah, is wisdom, but we can also say that there is the Quran and there is hikmah in addition to that. So it's something other than the book. As as if there are two separate categories. Now it says in the Quran, it says, Our Lord, send among them a messengers from themselves who will recite to them your verses and teach them the book and wisdom and to purify them. So now he's mentioning three things. So the purpose of sending messengers is to teach them the book, 
which primarily composes of the laws or it composes of uh, spiritual guidance, reminders, and so on. But that is something other than the principle of wisdom. There are wise statements in the Quran, in the Bible, and so on. But wisdom, as we will see, is defined as something else, something other than Scripture, something beyond Scripture. In fact, we can say now that wisdom is more universal than Scripture. Wisdom is a reality, a universal reality, which encompasses all of existence. And Scripture, the Quran and the Bible and the Torah and other holy books contain wisdom, but they also contain other things beyond, besides wisdom, such as laws, such as uh, exhortations, such as reminders, or even stories. And those stories contain wisdom. So there is a story and there, there is the wisdom of the story. This is the verse in the Quran. It says, O Jesus, son of Mary, remember my favor upon you and upon your mother when I supported you with a pure spirit and you spoke to the people in the cradle and in maturity and when I taught you the book, the wisdom, the Torah, and the gospel. Several things are being mentioned here. The book, the wisdom, the Torah, and the gospel. And he says about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he says, He is the one who has sent an unlettered messenger from among themselves, reciting his verses and purifying them, teaching them the book and wisdom before which they were clearly astray. In many verses, God mentions himself as the Hakim, as the wise. And he juxtaposes the word Hakim with Alim. He says, God is the knowledgeable and the wise. So we have a close relationship between knowledge and wisdom. God says in the Quran, He says, whoever He gives wisdom to, He has given him a great, a great good. And that great good, it says, وَخَيْرٍ well, كَثِيرٍ as, as it says in the Arabic, it means that wisdom has many branches. It is a tree with many different kinds of fruits. It is something which, which keeps on giving. So one who has not just a piece of wisdom or has encompasses the spirit of wisdom but can be said is wise, then they, their wisdom and their benefit to the rest of humanity is multiple. It is tenfold. It is better than knowledge. Knowledge may be confined to a particular field. It may be about a certain event or a particular thing. You may solve a single problem with knowledge, but wisdom is a thing which where you can solve many problems. Wisdom is like seeing the big picture. Knowledge is seeing the, the individual, the individual aspect, and wisdom is seeing the big picture. Now, as for the hadith on wisdom, the Prophet said that I am the most eloquent amongst the Arabs. The Prophet said the sage is all but a prophet. So look at the greatness of the sage in Islam. He says in, in the hadith, he says, whoever becomes sincere for God for 40 days, springs of wisdom gush out from his heart and onto his tongue. The Prophet also said that struggle against the desires of yourself and wisdom will enter your hearts. Jesus, peace be upon him, said, Verily, wisdom is the light of every heart. The prophet said, A word of wisdom that the believer hears is better than the worship of a whole year. Think about this statement for a, for a minute. We are entering the month of Ramadan. Ramadan, we spend time fasting, which is abstinence. We spend time reading the Quran. We spend time in worship. We spend time in reflection. All of these spiritual activities must be accompanied with, through wisdom or with wisdom. Why? Because a word of wisdom that the believer hears is better than the worship of a whole year. So imagine that you seek out a word of wisdom or you learn a piece of wisdom in this month. You can measure, put that on one one side of the scale and all of the other worships on another side of the scale. 
This is how lofty and how magnificent wisdom is and how it has been described both in the Quran and the prophetic tradition. Luqman, the sage, he says, My son, learn wisdom and you will become noble. For verily wisdom directs towards religion. It will elevate the slave over the free person. It raises the poor above the rich and it precedes the young over the old. So this here is the true criteria of humanity, which Luqman is mentioning in giving advice to his son. He's saying that it will ennoble you. It will make you more noble and elevate you, even if you are a slave. Even if you are poor, wisdom will ennoble you over the rich. Even the young will precede the old. What is the criteria of greatness? It's wisdom. Imam Ali, he said, Wisdom is the garden of the intelligent. He says that it is the tree that grows in the heart and produces fruit on the tongue. He says, The one who is known for his wisdom is regarded by the eyes with dignity and awe. So it is that wisdom which possesses dignity and awe, which the person who possesses that wisdom embodies, embraces that, those qualities. One who speaks wisdom embodies dignity and awe from the observer. Why? Because wisdom is great, not because the person is great. He becomes great on account of his wisdom, not because he is someone wealthy, not because he's a dignitary, not because he's strong or handsome. None of these qualities can supersede wisdom. In the eyes of God, those people who are the most noble are the righteous ones, are the wise ones. These are the qualities, the real qualities with God. Imam Ali says, from among the matters of wisdom to avoid dispute with the one who is above you, to not belittle anyone below you, to not undertake a task which is outside of your capability. Do not have your tongue contradict your heart, and neither your word contradict your action. Do not speak of that which you do not know, and to not abandon a matter as it approaches only to pursue as it retreats. Imam as sadiq said, Wisdom is the inner knowledge and deep understanding of religion. For the one who understands among you is truly the wise man. So now, wisdom, according to Jafar al-Sadiq, he was one of the great grandsons of the Prophet and a, and a wise man himself. He says, wisdom is inner knowledge and deep understanding of religion. For the one who understands among you is truly a wise man. Religion is not the quantity of prayers and worship or adherence to laws blindly. Those very laws and those acts of worship must lead you to the spirit of wisdom. This is the goal of the human being. The goal is to arrive at understanding of life, is to know reality, is to understand God and His creation is to embody the spirit of mercy which wisdom will give you. To be merciful to all of humanity and all of mankind and all of the creatures, a wise person can act upon this. Luqman was asked, was, he says, what is the crux of your religion? He says, I do not ask about that which I know already. I do, not, I do not burden myself with that which does not concern me. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, The noblest speech is the remembrance of God, and the fountainhead of wisdom is his obedience. So here we have a correlation between the code of behavior, which occurs in all religions. Every religious doctrine encompasses a theology and a code of behavior what is legal, what is lawful, what is virtuous, what is righteous. Some, some things are, are, are mandatory, some things are optional. 
the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Leniency is the fountainhead of wisdom. Imam Ali says, The fountainhead of wisdom is to be bound to the truth and to obey the one who is on the path of truth. So yet another quality of wisdom is leniency and to be on the path of truth. Wisdom must go hand in hand with truth. This is one of the surefire criterion of wisdom, that wisdom speaks a truth. It must evoke a truth, describe a truth, or it must encapsulate a truth. And this is really the summary of the whole video, the whole piece today on wisdom, is that wisdom speaks the truth. It's just said in a, in, a, in a beautiful way, and we'll get to that in the next video. Just a few more quotes, and I'll end today's talk. Imam Ali says, Conquer your lustful desire, and your wisdom will be perfected. And he says, There is no wisdom except through inerrancy. And he says, Much contemplation on matters of wisdom causes the intellect to flourish, and it raises the human being from the beast to higher than the angels. So this is the true reason for which the human being was created is to shine with wisdom. We'll end here and next time we'll look at some of the statements of the philosophers on wisdom and we'll get into another discussion. And I hope to see you next time. Take care.